17 trades made at the trade deadline in the National Football League, John. Uh, this was historical in nature. It had never happened before. And I think you and I last last Thursday talked a little bit about the NFL is now run by different people. You know, baseball has been overwhelmed by the metric system and, and analytics and Harvard graduates who are now general managers have changed the game. I think the NFL's got some of that happening now. I also think there's a new philosophy in the NFL is we get, need to win right now. And if I'm a new general manager or I'm a new coach, and John, if you don't fit my system, I'm going to trade you. Mm -hmm. And if I have to trade draft picks to get you and your contract off my salary cap, I will do that. And that's what's happened. Now, some of these deals uh, have been triggered by teams that think they're real close. And by making a deal, they're going to pull themselves in to the playoff race or playoff spot. Uh, some of these deals have been made by teams that said, we're not going to pay that money to this guy who's an impending free agent. The Christian McCaffrey trade, which was the first blockbuster deal that happened, he goes to San Francisco, and we saw in his first full game with the 49ers the difference he could make. Running the football, catching the football, and by the way, dude threw a touchdown pass <laughs> yeah, of the football too. So that was <laughs> that was pretty impressive. The next big trade was Denver taking apart, and Denver's had a wretched season, taking apart their defense. Their defense is one of the top two in the NFL. They trade the big pass-rushing defensive end, Brad Chubb. I was kind of stunned because you don't find these guys on street corners, yet they, they traded him after four years with the team. They didn't feel they could afford to re-sign him. He goes to Miami uh, for a number one draft pick. Miami also made a trade to get Jeff Wilson, uh, the running back who had been a starter in San Francisco. Miami looks like they are loaded to go hunt this thing down and go deep in the AFC playoffs Jeez. with Tua uh, as their quarterback. Baltimore, it wasn't a sexy trade, but if you if you know John Harbaugh, you know two things. Lamar Jackson's going to make things happen when he has the football in his hand, and Baltimore's defense is going to beat you up. And they go get another linebacker that plays that way. Roquan Smith, who had been very unhappy, impending free agent with the Bears, traded. Uh, a couple of high draft picks go to Chicago. In that deal, Roquan Smith steps into the middle of a really street-tough Baltimore Ravens defense. You play them, it's like you're going walking down a dark alley. That's how <laughs> good they are mm -hmm. defensively. And it's just a typical transaction uh, that the Baltimore Ravens make. Strangers trade was within the division. Would you deal to make the enemy in your division better? That's what happened in Detroit. Mm -hmm. I don't have an explanation for this, although the Lions stockpiling draft picks. The rebuild has been really slow for Dan Campbell, the new coach. It's been a struggle for three years. They're 4-19-1. and one. They trade TJ Hawkinson, pretty good pass-catching tight end. He goes to the Vikings. And now he walks in, and here's the playbook from their new coach, Kevin O'Connell, the ex-Aztec, the San Diegan from La Costa Canyon. They're 6-1. and one. And now they add a pass-catching tight end to Justin Jefferson and Adam Thalen, the big play receivers, Dalvin Cook, the tough guy, explosive running back, and the veteran quarterback, Kirk Cousins. This is a heck of a deal for Minnesota. Might be a half-year rental. Hawkinson becomes a free agent. But if we can catch a pile of passes and they can force their way into the NFC playoffs, which at this point, they're right in the driver's seat. Wow, that's a pretty good deal. So, I mean, think about that, trading with the enemy uh, in your division. And then there was a controversial trade, Jacksonville, and it's really been slow growth for the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, who many expected to be a superstar in the league. And right now he's kind of pedestrian. They're trying to build the Jacksonville franchise, the wreckage left behind by Urban Meyer. Jacksonville makes a controversial trade for with Atlanta for what they needed, a down-the-field threat receiver in Calvin Ridley. Ridley is suspended this year. He had had an injury. There were mental health issues. He sat out, and while he sat out, he bet on games. So he is serving a one-year suspension. He won't be with the Jaguars till next training camp. But if if he is clean and if if he has solved this betting addiction that he had, and he says he has, they got themselves a heck of a player to team with the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, and now the heavy-duty running back, uh, Travis Etienne. So those were the marquee deals. Trade deadline, your response? Um, I love it. I love the um, the action, the volatility. I love seeing you know in the, these classic uh, franchises like the Dolphins and the Vikings suddenly becoming competitive again. Um, they're putting themselves into the mix. But the other thing is, is like think of a team like the Lions. 
I mean, they've been in the doldrums for decades. Um, and because you just have to depend on the draft and maybe some free agent signings, it's hard for them to stockpile a lot of talent. You know, they weren't, a, they're not able to do what, say, the Astros did 10 yeah. years ago where you know they traded away all their guys, got a ton of picks, and then five, six years down the road, they became very, very good. So maybe we'll start to see some of that in the NFL. And if so, it'd be great to see some of these other franchises kind of resurrect themselves. 